The Qing Dynasty, which was ethnically Manchurian, not Han, took over China in the 17th century and faced continuous opposition, notably from secret societies like the Tian De Hui and the White Lotus. But during the 19th century, anti-Qing sentiment grew thanks to plagues, famines, floods, rebellions and unsuccessful wars against foreign powers. The Qing proved to be poor at responding to these disasters, had accumulated a lot of debt, still had an antiquated army, and struggled to govern over a rapidly increasing population. So there were numerous rebellions like the Taiping, the Dungan and the Nyang. And although these were unsuccessful, they were incredibly costly and many different groups still opposed the Qing for various reasons. Some wanted to give rights to women, many more advocated for democracy or at least a constitutional monarchy, and there were powerful radical groups like anarchists who had support from fellow anarchists in Japan and elsewhere. Plus in 1894 during the Sino-Japanese War, a Christian who had studied in Hawaii, Sun Yat-sen, created the revived China society with the aim of expelling the Manchurian Qing from China. From Hong Kong, he tried to start the revolution in Guangzhou in 1895, but the plans were discovered and most of the leaders were arrested. But anti-Qing sentiment continued to grow when Empress Dowager Cixi launched a coup against the Guangzhou Emperor because he tried to modernize China during the Hundred Days Reform in 1898. But despite the ongoing Boxer Rebellion in 1900, Sun Yat-sen's Huizhou uprising once again failed. So in 1905, in exile in Tokyo, Sun Yat-sen united many anti-Qing groups under the leadership of his new secret society, the Tong Men Hui. From America, Malaysia and Japan, the leaders gathered many supporters, many of which were officers and soldiers in China's new army who wanted to modernize China and prevent further foreign incursions. But they also had the backing of local gentry who felt disenfranchised by the Qing political system, and the new group of intellectuals who had studied abroad or benefit from the new domestic education system. But their first attempt to start a revolution in 1910 in Guangzhou failed once again. Meanwhile, many railway lines were being built in China, largely by foreign companies. The Qing started to allow local governments to build their own lines. However, they soon gave the right to build these lines back to foreign companies in order to make money and decrease building time. This led to large-scale protests in Sichuan in August 1911, led by the Railway Protection Movement. Many soldiers from nearby Wuhan were sent to help quell the protests, but the revolutionaries were unprepared to take advantage of this situation. However, while making bombs, one went off, and the police investigating the explosion found a list of all the revolutionaries in the area, many of which were in the army. So the soldiers of the new army that had remained in Wuhan mutinied, seized the government building and created the Hubei military government in early October 1911. Telegrams were then dispatched to fellow revolutionaries across the country who simultaneously rose up. In just a couple of months, the Tongmen Hui and their allies took over cities like Shanghai, Guiyuan, Hangzhou, Taiyuan, Kunming, Nanchang, Changsha and Xi'an. And they also took over a lot of provinces like Guangxi, Anhui, Fujian, Guangdong, Shandong, Ningxia, Sichuan and Guizhou, many of which declared their independence. And the Chinese did lose out of Mongolia when the Bogda Khan, with the help of the Russians, declared Mongolian independence. And the 13th Dalai Lama would go on to kick out all Chinese officials from Tibet, effectively gaining Tibetan independence as well. Meanwhile, the Emperor Puyi was just a toddler at the time, so Prince Jing, who held the newly created post of Prime Minister, largely governed the country. He initially tried to crush the rebellion with force and had some success. For instance, Yuan Shi Kai and his Beiyang army would go on to defeat the rebels in Wuhan, and Ma An Liang prevented the rebels from taking Xijiang. But Prince Jing stepped down in early November and Yuan Shi Kai became the new prime minister. Shortly afterwards, however, Nanjing fell to the rebels in early December and Sun Yat-sen was made president of the new Provisional Republic of China. But Sun Yat-sen still lacked the military force needed to challenge Yuan Shi Kai's Beiyang army and was fearful that a prolonged civil war would encourage further foreign encroachment. So in early 1912, with the help of foreign powers, the two sides ended peace negotiations. Sun Yat-sen agreed to hand over control of southern China to Yuan Zhi Kai, but Yuan had to force Pu Yi to abdicate and set up a republic. A parliament was created, but Sun Yat-sen's new Kuomintang party was so successful that Yuan began ignoring parliament and persecuting opposition. So a second revolution was launched against Yuan, but this failed and in 1915 Yuan declared himself the new emperor but died the following year. And just before he died in 1916, military leaders in the south rebelled against him and China began to split up into small states governed by warlords. Sun Yat-sen would eventually return to China in the 1920s and try to unite it, but this began the civil war which lasted until the 1940s. 